Hello folks, welcome to another episode of Yoga Dave's Hobby Podcast, um, the podcast where I talk about anything and everything, war games, board games, um, RPGs, um, <coughs> skirmish games, anything tabletop war gaming and gaming uh, as a whole, apart from collectible card games, which we all know I don't do. Um, so, today um, I'm going to talk about a few different things, so this is going to be another rambling podcast um, so as we speak um, the Chaos um, Space Marines the new ones were um, previewed yesterday um, they're going to be on pre-sale tomorrow so like not tomorrow this Saturday so by the time this episode actually airs it will be about the right time now by reading what Games Workshop have said, the games work, the figures will be interchangeable with like all the o- o- other kits. So like the old Chaos Space Marine kits, the Primaris kits, the this, that and the next thing kits. So um, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, well that's pretty cool. Um but the problem is Um how customizable are they? <coughs> like are you going to be able to take the legs and the bodies? Because the one thing that I was loving about Games Workshop and the the push that they've been given in the last couple of years was customizability of all the figures. Now, that seems to have gone kind of by the wayside with um, um What's the name it? Necromunda. Um, because well, well, there are a little customize. There is a little, a little. I can't even talk. There's a little customizability, if that's even the word, um, with the Necromunda stuff. There's still lots of cutting and faffing about with it that you have to do green stuff and, and eh, it's kind of annoying compared to what you know, been used to pre, actually it's probably since the new edition of 40k came out a lot of um, single monopose bloody figures which I thought they had got away from but it's um, you know if it's like the old way um, so Hold on. It's, uh, sorry, I had to ask a question. Uh, answer a question there. Um, so, yeah. So, is it going to be the old style, or you, you can integrate arms and legs and torsos and backpacks and all the rest that kind of stuff, or is it going to be it's a single like body? Heart, and then you've got the helmet, and then you've got the backpack, and then you've got the arms. You know, that's that's my question on it. Because I mean, I understand the um, easy build space marines, the new Primaris ones. I built a number of them, um, and you know, the idea behind that was it makes it easier for new players to get into the game. They can play the game. You can just put them together. They don't need to glue them together. I mean, that's understandable. That's 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 a business um, move. But at the end of the day, um, the fact that the Games Workshop sprues were a goldmine for all these extra parts that you could use for, say converting this kit or that kit or the next kit that was great um, this move towards less of that is kind of annoying um, to me I mean that it, it's just like well what's the fucking point of going out and buying especially considering that the kits have gone up in price you know what I mean it's not like you're getting all this extra plastic um, and the kits have gone up in price. You're losing it. You're losing customizability. 
I think, and you're losing a lot of parts um, with this kind of thing, the way, the way that they're doing it. I mean, I've got hundreds of space wolf parts that let me convert my bloody Prospero and um, Scott Betrayal of Calth um, stuff into space wolves rather than me having to go out and spend stupid amounts of money on resin, which was great. But that that's only because the space wolf, um, you know, Grey Hunter and well, the pack box gave you so many custom, so many options. Um, obviously, the long fang ones are separate. Um, I actually don't have the long fang ones. Um, I never bought that. Oh, it's always been pack boxes. <laughs> I've bought and um, had older heavy weapons that I had because um, I don't use heavy weapons that much. Um, I, I think I'll probably use maybe one squad of long fangs in a, a game. Ever, I, I think I've only ever used two once, and I've got enough heavy weapons to do two. So it's like the th the thing with me is, and I know I'm getting off on a tangent here, but I like playing close combat space wolf armies. So my my space wolf army has lots of close combat stuff, but you know that's beside the point. Um, you know I, I want to know this because I don't want to go out and invest money. Next for at Christmas, on a uh, or even you know going out and buying one half a shadow spear because I don't need the um what you call it the space marine the vanguard side of it because if I wanted that kind of army I would have that kind of army already um it, it doesn't appeal to me in any way, shape or form. I mean, I like Reavers. Reavers are fun, but um, a whole army of infiltrators just does not agree with me, uh, space minion wise. Um, I don't mind doing it for, like, um, Gene Steel Cult, but for space minions, I have my Wolf Scouts that I rarely use. Very rarely use. And even then, they don't generally infiltrate. They get dropped in a... Um, well, now they get dropped in the land speeder um, storm. Yeah, it's the land speeder storm. The one where they can carry a squad of scouts, which we never used to be able to get, which is cool. I like that now. Um, I actually bought one, forgetting that I couldn't put my scouts on it, which was kind of stupid, but it makes for a nice model. Makes for a nice piece. Um, but yeah, so am I going to invest this money? on an army what I can't customise I mean that's the whole point that you, or I, I'm going to have to do the same kind of customization that I used to do you know cutting and pinning and green stuffing and mod on putty and shit you know that's what I used to have to do uh, back in the day when I wanted to customise figures you know I, mean? I don't mind converting but the fact that I could convert without having to do too much work was always a Great thing about the new plastic kits. Sorry, I do not know. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm looking at everything that's pre-order for. Well, it would have been a week past on Saturday. I think they'd have been released by now. Um, if I'm getting my timing right. Um, so you get Abaddon this the spoiler, which, to be fair, Abaddon has been needing a new figure a long time. Not as long as I've been needing a new fucking Ragnar Blackman right enough, but, you know, let's not get into that. Um, or, you know, it's just Ragnar. Because they, they uh, did Ulrich and, um, what's his name? Um, Bjorn. No, uh, no, I, well, they did read that Bjorn, but they also read that, um, Ulf. The Ulf? Oh, fuck. Ulfric the Slayer. Um, but yeah, I mean, Abaddon's been needing a a redo pretty badly for quite a while um, and it is an awesome model and the fact that you can have the cape on or you not know, have the cape on different heads and there's a little bit of customization so you can fit how you see the war master um, and your army it's pretty cool I don't know how much it's going to be but um, yeah and then, as I said, you know, you get the 10, ten Chaos Space Marines, um, which do look 
really good. Um, Chaos Space Marines have been in an update for a long, long time. Um, but also, you know, they're, they're kind of keeping it in theme with the Blackstone Fortress and the new Shadow Spear box set, um, which is pretty cool. Um, so, each box you can do 10 figures, so two units of five or a unit of ten, each with a special or heavy weapon. Um, and the Chaos Icon and also, also the Respiring Champion. And they do say fitting on this fittings on this are compatible with much of the Chaos Space Marine Space Marine ranges. Um, so maybe you mix in Mark III armor, make Iron Warriors or Stirring Parts from Tactical Swords to make renegades that are more recent and all, all the rest of this kind of stuff. Which, you know, as I was saying, it, it, it would be really nice if you could mix in um like body parts other than just the the arms and the shoulder the arms and the backpacks and the helmets and stuff um, but it looks as if from the figures that they've done it is going to be um, just the bodies I can't see very much in the way of customization on these ones that they've done with the different parts Unless it's just different parts that are in the box, and that's fair enough. But um, yeah, doesn't look like much um, in the way of being able to do anything other than like arm swaps and backpack swaps and head swaps, which is kind of annoying because I would really like if I'm gonna get well these guys. If I'm gonna, I mean, there is a plan for me to eventually get fucking chaos army, but. Um, that's way down the line um, it would be nice if the parts that I've got for my space wolves or my tactical squads or my scout squads or whatever, all those parts I could chuck on these new parts, these new um, boxes um, but yeah, I mean fair enough <laughs> and then uh, uh, the um, the Chaos Stargate. It's called a Noctilith Crown. Um, it's a new terrain piece. Taken as a fort creation, the Noctilith Crown is more than just an awesome centerpiece, but a tactical linchpin for heretic stories. Give nearby units an invulnerable save, awesome, and making it easier for Chaos Psychers to cast their fell magics. Now, it looks like, let's be honest, a Chaos Stargate. Um, it's got the wee symbols on it. It's got, you know, it's a ring with segments and stuff. Um, I think somebody from uh, the MGM that did Stargate. I think it was MGM that did Stargate. Is going to be um, coming to have words with Games Workshop, having a look at this for fuck's sake. It's, it's just it literally looks like a Stargate with like a, a, a an eight pointy um, ring on it. Let's get to the chaos eight points, eight point eight ring, um, and then like a base on it and some change and shit. It's <laughs> literally <laughs> that's the only thing that distinguishes it really from a Stargate from SG One. And lots of people have may been making jokes about that. It's not just me that have been noticing that. It's like every second post about it is. Or actually, not every second post. It every single bloody post about that thing is. Stargate references and shit, and it's like fuck's sake, really. Um, but yeah, there's a new book out, a new campaign book called Vigilance of Blaze as well, with um, with the new Chaos stuff, which is pretty cool because um, it's got new rules content for Chaos players, um, some specialised attachments, horse wrapped Horio. I'm assuming that is lots and lots of raptors. And then fallen angels. Is that not just dark angels? I mean, let's be honest. I know it's cheap uh, and it's cheeky taking a dark angel shot, but let's be honest, they're all fucking trails anyway. Um, that's not all. Books also contains vastly expanded rules for your Black Legion, offering you very old stratagems, relics, and mollow traits to fit in the storied Legion's legendary record um, in battle. 
Uh, the Vigilance of Blaze also breathes new life into the Renegade chapters. Those raiders, of course, who have joined the ranks of Chaos since the dark days of the Horus Heresy. You find no tra- new traits for fan favourites like the Red Corsairs, Crimson Slaughter, plus rules from Niche, but the love of Renegades like the Purge, Brazen Beast, Flawed Host, and the Scrubs. Each, own ha- each has their own rules, including Bespoke Relic and Stratagem. With Vigilance of Blaze, you'll have more freedom when building your Chaos army than ever before, allowing you to re- create a Dread Host to suit your taste. Um, ooh. Vigilance of Blaze also serves a sizable update to Corn Demons. You for Bloodmaster, Skull Take on the Skull Altar, giving you an unlimited excuse to use the incredible models in your 40k army. And more excuse for Games Workshop to sell, which is fair enough. That's what they do. Um, and also Chaos Space Marine, Codex Chaos Space Marine, I can't even talk. Codex Chaos Space Marine's getting an update, even though it was only released like a year and a half ago. But saying that, I, I think. Um, Codex Space Marines up for a bloody update very soon with all the new shit they keep on laying down for them um, eh, that, that's interesting people have been complaining about that now but to be fair there have been you know there have been updates to the Chaos Space Marines They've been updated to the black rails. Um, you've got new possessed. Um, you've got new demon engines, um, and there's probably going to be updates to everything. Like, so, what's the problem with them updating the rule book? Now, I know if you have a paper copy, it's going to be a pain in the arse because that means you're having to go out and buy another paper copy. Um, but I would think if you bought the ebook version. It wouldn't be so, so much an issue because I think, to be fair, you should get the um, update for free. Might not, might not. I know with um, anything you buy on Drive Through RPG, if there's an update, you get the updated version of it. Like I've had f- fuck, is it five updates to Star Wars Adventures? I think it's five. Um, I've got all the updates to Eclipse Phase, the the well first edition anyway. Um, not second edition. Don't have second edition. Don't see the point in buying second edition. I've got first edition, um, and I like the rules. Um, what else? Oh, um, any Marvel stuff that I've um, downloaded, like the the. Um, add-on books for second edition which will be a waste when third edition comes about but at the same time every time that got updated every time it was errated I got an update Games Workshop should be doing the same but I doubt they do to be honest with you it's Games Workshop love them, load them don't matter they're out to make money um, and help and have an enjoyable hobby as well. Uh, I, I, I don't. They are a publicly traded company, which means they are about making money, but they're also about making money while having fun doing it, which is fine. I don't mind that so much. It's when they keep on trying to scalp me for money is the annoying thing. I had a discussion with Dan Adam about this, and you'll have heard it in the previous podcast because this is coming after the one with Dan um, about the amount of updates that are getting chucked at us at the moment with From Games Workshop it's really nice it's really nice to see it continually growing and building and shifting and the campaigns and everything and the, the narrative shifting for, you know I mean I've played 40k on and off for fuck knows how many years um, and the narrative shifts at points it took first to second edition for the narrative to shift as much as it did um, and to third there wasn't much of a narrative shift obviously yeah they did Dark Elder and I think the Necrons got, um, if I remember rightly got added onto because you got Necrons at the tail end of second I think 
Um, if, I can't remember to be honest. Every time there was like a campaign, like an Aya Terror campaign or whatever and that was, whatever, um, there was a little bit of a narrative shift, but there'd been a massive narrative shift um, from seventh edition to eighth edition, um, and it is a big massive shift. It was. Let's say it was probably as much of a massive shift as going from Warhammer Fantasy to Age of Sigma. Now, not as much in the fact that um, Age of Sigma completely blew the old world apart, but in the sense of time and setting, uh, I think the the build up. In seventh, the, at the end of seventh, into eighth, um, and the massive narrative shift um, was important, but also the fact that as we go along, Games Workshop obviously, by the looks of things, have a plan to sh- continually move on the narrative um, of the canon or the the fluff or whatever you want to call it. Um, rather than stagnating because that tends to be what they've done it stagnates for an edition or two and then it moves on a little bit stagnates for an edition or two moves on a little bit that was the Games Workshop way for many a year not just in 40k but in Warhammer as well and in the, the new editions of both games there has been a massive narrative shift but I think it's needed it. It's the same as why I think the increase in tech was required as well from um, this new edition um, because there has been such a drop in, from second edition onwards in the actual um, arsenal of the Space Marines and the Pew Guard and stuff that you needed a big, big, massive push um, to make them viable. I mean, I know uh, competition wise, Space Marine, like pure Space Marine armies, or actually any Space Marine armies, are kind of um, not well regarded um, and, and don't get taken very often, don't win very often, and stuff like that, but you know. That's why, I mean, the, again, no discussion me and Dan had in the previous podcast was the fact that, you know, Warhammer changing from the old world to um, Age of Sigma was a copyright thing. I know a lot of the stories that get branded about, but when every single army's name gets changed so it can be copyrighted it's a copyright shift it's them learning from that incident with the Space Marine in the book with the Space Marine in their name and trying to say oh sending a cease and desist and trying to um, say oh we own the the rights to Space Marines or the the trademark to Space Marines when you don't you own Adeptus Tartis but Primaris Space Marines they own that copyright or trademark intellectual property you know all that kind of stuff Um, Eldari Drukari you know all these things you got to think of it's it is and I don't care what anyone says it's a copyright thing it's an intellectual property issue which is what they're um, it's why Chaos Space Marines is Heretic Astartes I mean it still says Codex Space Marines you know it's why Astra Militarum is not Imperial Guard anymore and the official you know when when they talk about army books and stuff like that it's not Stormtroopers it's um, what are they again we'll have a Stormtroopers on it um, <laughs> some Somebody can tell me, because I can never remember the name. Um, you know, it's all it's a, it's a it's a shift. It's a co- it's a copyright and intellectual property shift, but it's also 
a big massive narrative shift that you need to do to to warrant it I suppose but also I think and, and everyone else has I think probably got to this point that they realise that they want to um, basically take out the original Space Marines from the current canon like once um, they move on far enough they'll just completely remove the space marines that are, are just now from the from the range and from the cannon well they won't take them from the cannon they'll say oh this was the old range this is the old space marines um, which I don't like I'll be honest I like the idea of mixing and matching them but that's because I like my Space Wolf Army. I like the way my Space Wolf Army plays, for the most part. Except when I get beat. Which I get beat a lot, actually, to be honest. I, sh- I shouldn't have a problem with getting beat. I don't have a problem with getting beat if the game's fun. I have a problem with getting beat if the game's not fun. That's the thing. I, I've never had an issue with getting beat when I've had fun. When I win, I can be a bit of a bad winner. I admit that. Absolutely 100%. Especially if it's my bro or my da. And I'm this <laughs> I'm a bad cruiser but I'm living inside of them as well. But um yeah. For the most part. I don't have a problem with admitting that, but you know that's the thing. I, I want to keep my blood claws, I want to keep my sky claws, I want to keep my fucking swift claws, I want to keep my wolf guard on bikes. I wanna keep all this stuff. I don't want to lose it. I don't want it to become a part of the history of the hobby. I don't mind adding hell blasters. I don't mind adding intercessors. I don't mind adding fucking reavers or contempt of dreadnoughts or all this stuff that they're bringing out. I don't mind adding it to my collection. I don't add, mind adding it when maybe I need to use it in an army. I don't want Ragnar Blackman Primarist. That's what I don't want. I don't want him to be fucking Calgard. That's a new term I have coined now for myself. Getting the Primaris treatment is getting Calgard. Quack. Don't like the Ultramarines. Almost as much as I don't like the Dark Angels. Fuck us. Um, but yeah. That's the thing. Um, I don't want this. I don't, I don't mind adding them to my collection. As I said, I don't mind adding Primaris Marines. What I do have an issue with is taking away my blood claws and my sky claws and my swift claws. Because I like the bikes and I like the jetpacks and I like getting into close combat and just chainsorting fuckers. It's fun. It's fun to play that way. It's like playing a fucking space marine orc. I've been told that before, to be honest. You like a fucking space mate. You like a space wolf orc hybrid. It's like, eh, that's not actually that far from the bloody truth, to be honest. I do like that whole ah, getting into close combat and having. F- yeah, that's that's. To be honest, space wolves are like that. Yes, you have grey hunters and you have long fangs to back you up, but you should be chucking loads of. Um, close combat stuff, I mean Wolfen for Christ's sake don't have Wolfen, never had Wolfen, probably will never buy Wolfen, but still having fun with the close combat army, so, you know don't take it away from me Games Workshop I'm not stopped playing the game, I'll just well, play fucking Space Boom I'll just play previous editions with my Space Marines well, my space wolves. The way that they are. Um, but, yeah. That's me being going on for about half an hour about that. Um, so, I believe this week will be the week where I am starting to do the new campaign. So, with my new group of players. Um, I think it's this Thursday. Um, and next week probably on the Wednesday I'll be releasing the actual play what I'm going to do is I'm going to release a normal podcast like a, a regular podcast 
um, on a Monday. I'm going to release the regular podcast on Monday, and then on the Wednesday, I'll release the actual play podcast. Um, so not only this campaign I'm talking about, but um, also the Infinity RPG ones, um, and any subsequent um, RPGs that I do, um, I'll do Wednesdays. Um, so that'll be a schedule or I think actually I keep on thinking about it well if I'm going to do a regular podcast um, and then on a Wednesday I release the actual play podcast from the, the new group and then if I've got another one like another actual play I release it on a Friday um, I, I don't know I'm still trying to figure out what kind of schedule I want to run um, it's also um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what else I'm going to talk about later on as well um, at the end of this but what I've decided to do um, I was considering writing a brand new campaign for the multiplayer um, like in Faerun but um, I decided because they're, they're all very new and all very very new to me too um, it'd be easier if I just did some pre-built um, adventures now I know you would think well would it not be easier to build a campaign around these characters actually not See, because I don't know them, it'd be it, it'd be different if it was the guys at um, Falkirk, who I know pretty much everyone. So I can I know their personalities. I know what this person likes, that person likes, the next person likes. Um, it's it's more difficult to build a campaign around players you don't know, um, because you don't know the play styles, you don't know you know how they're going to react in a situation. With this. It's it's easier to like sit them down and play um, pre built pre built pre generated um, pre written um, campaign or uh, adventures. What it's going to be is the Adventure Leagues War Deep um, series, not the season, so it's season eight of the Adventure League, um, and it's it's four hour sessions. They say, I'm going to try and get it in three and a half um, to maybe three hours trying to push in. If not, I'll be extending one adventure, one weekend, the next week, and, and keep, keep on doing that until, you know, obviously um, we are at the end of the adventures. Um, I think there's. I can't remember off the top of my head, I think it was 15 or something like that. Um, I'll actually bring it up to be honest. Um, it's easier if I remember. I think it was 15 and there's a couple of side quests as well. Um, Adventure League. What are um, Yeah, there's 15 and there's two um, epilogue quests. <laughs> They come in at different points, I think. I have read, like, to the basics of them, but I've not read all the way through them. Um, but yeah, I mean, I want to do this as a, a jumping off point. Also doing the... Um, this allows me to get other people involved in it so like if it was um, if it was my own narrative if it was my own world or something like that it'd be more difficult for people to follow along because you know obviously the adventure league you can get hold of and you can you can play whereas if it was my own world and everything I'd have to write it all down and be precise about it and stuff rather than jumping along on the fly which I do very very often 
I'll add stuff on the fly. So if the event the action isn't kind of flown, you chuck a, maybe a side quest in here or a mob or two here that weren't actually in it or it's it's a lot easier to do that um, when you're not trying to um, what's the word I'm looking for um, trying to impart it on other people like it's fine when you're you know your players you can hand them stuff you can go right okay this is this is a bit of a primer I've got a primer for one of the worlds that I, the world that I've played in for years and years um, that I've GM for years with different groups um, I have a primer for it and you know it's, it's good for people and I've got like maps and stuff and I even thought about writing uh, um, an actual like campaign book and like world book for 3.5 um, or Pathfinder, um, but um, I decided against it. Um, I'd have probably been finished it by now if I actually had buckled down and did it, but I haven't. So there you go. Um, but the thing is with this is it's easier to do than my own adventure would be, um, and all this that kind of stuff. So, also, they wanted to do Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition. Now, I've never played Fifth Edition. Uh, I'm learning along with them, and um, so this also helps me with, uh, you know, I'm already planned out, already, you know, it's already laid out. It's easy, easy for me to follow while I'm learning the rules along with them. This is it's a learning curve for us all um, D&D 5th edition is new to me I haven't played the new edition since 3.5 so you know there's changes that are shifts for me that I'm having to learn along with them and, you know, I mean a few of them know the rules a bit better than me because they played they haven't pl have they haven't had masses of hours of play, but they still have played this set of rules, and I have not yet. So um, it's going to be interesting, um, and, and I'm really looking forward to. It. I'm so pumped for for well, right now it's next Thursday, not this Thursday. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's next Thursday, and I'm really really looking forward to. It. I'm really really looking forward to meeting. The, the group as well um, because there's an enthusiasm in it that I don't always get from my current group current group, you know, yeah you get to play RPGs and all this, that kind of stuff but you don't have the same new to the hobby enthusiasm anymore um, obviously with parts of that group and Falkirk that I'm a member of first time any of them ever played an RPG was with us, but you know, it was three or four years ago um, when we started doing it, so um, there's not as much of an enthusiasm, let's see, um, that I'm getting off these guys and I'm really liking it. I'm really, I'm really, really liking it. Um. Yeah, so that's 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 the little bit of me talking about that. So next, I'll be next Wednesday. Um, obviously, next Monday there'll be another podcast. Um, but next Wednesday we'll release the actual play first podcast of um, Thursday Night Gamers. <laughs> I think of um, of uh, put down. The Thursday Night Gamers, yeah, Thursday Night Gamers. Um, might be able to change that name. Might change that name. Um, but um, this this will be this will be fun, uh, and I'm hoping that people will enjoy the actual play. 
of the, the podcast. Um, what else? Oh, yes. Um, as of not next week, but the week after. So, not this week. As in, not this week that we're talking about. Um, the time, and as in, um, I'll be starting to do some Twitch. Um, casts, hopefully. Um, I'm trying to figure out the, the best way of doing it. Um, I'm, I'm trying to find out, find, my brain is not working today. I'm not feeling that great, so, but I had to record the podcast because I had to get it done. Um, yeah, so, uh, hold on. Yeah, so the plan is for me to do um, two or three nights a week some Twitch um, uh, casts or streams or whatever you, I can I, my brain's not working 100% with it right now but it'll be me doing some painting or me doing some um, gaming or me doing the various bits and pieces of the hobby um, I'm not sure as to what yet everything will be but it takes a bit of planning um, I did a test cast um, of me playing Mass Effect Andromeda nobody watched it but it ran which is the important thing um, and that that's the plan to keep on going um, to add more and more to the multimedia empire that is <laughs> That is um, Yogi Dave's hobby. So, obviously, at that, that point, we'll have the podcast, we'll have the YouTube channel, we'll have the Twitch channel. Um, and right now, I don't plan on adding anything else. Um, from what I've been picking up from um, various sources, is having a planned schedule and having a schedule that you stick to and fit in with yourself, obviously if you can't do it, you let people know um, but <clears throat> it won't be this week, it won't be next week I might, if I can get them to do it, if I can convince them get the Thursday Night Gamers to do not only an actual play of the podcast but um, to do a, a playthrough on Twitch I don't really want to push too much at them at one point. I might wait until we have done the water deep. But if they're up for it, then I might do it. But as I said, I don't want to push them too hard on it. Um, I don't want to, you know, pull the shit out people either. Um, obviously, we're not trying to be critical, though. Those guys are professional voice actors. No way, no way can you, can you, can you even try and be those people? I don't want to be anyone else. I just want to do my thing. I don't. I want to do hobby shit, and I want to do hobby shit that people will enjoy. Um, with it, I, I mean, I do. I really have what I wanted to do was do live plays of games and stuff on YouTube and stuff when I started to do the YouTube channel but unfortunately we moved into a place which is shitty internet and I can't have it can't guarantee it's going to be consistent um, which is annoying but I'm going to try I'm going to try and hopefully in the next couple of weeks they're going to be adding version to the building anyway and, and by the time that comes on you know it might be a month or two down the line. So I might get it in. I might get it running. Um, I think that's it for today. It's been good 45 minutes. Round about. Um, of me talking. And me feeling like shit. And me stopping and starting. Um, so. As always. I encourage you. To share the podcast talk about it, you know, review it, comment on it, rate it, 
whatever you do on your platform for your podcast. Um, if you um, want to listen to the YouTube or want to watch the YouTube channel, it's Yoga Dave's Hobby Podcast. Um, not Hobby Podcast. This is Yoga Dave's Hobby Podcast. Yoga Dave's Hobby Corner um, on obviously YouTube. Um, the Twitch channel will be Yogi Dave's Hobby Stream, I think. I think that's it, what I put it down as. Um, I will tell you right now. Twitch, Twitch, Twitch. Uh, Yogi Dave's Hobby Stream, yeah. So, <laughs> Wargaming Dice, vlog, live vlogging miniature figures. That's this, the tags are on it, but just put in Yogi Dave's Hobby Pot, um, Yogi. Yogi Dave's hobby screen stream, bleep, can't even talk right now, um, and you'll find it. And right now, what you will find is um, me having played uh, Mass Effect, and the the sound is shit on it, because I'm a noob. I'm a noob. I'm a noob at most of this stuff, to be honest with you. You know, podcasting, I've been done during all of three months. Um, all of two months, probably, actually, now. Got my hand kit, but. You know, um, YouTube I've been doing for a couple more months, but you know, I'm still terrible at that. <laughs> um, my lighting and everything's fucking shocking. Um, but as always, um, the raffles, whatever is ongoing right now, um, go to coffee slash yogi dave, um, so k o um, dash. F I dot com slash uh, forward slash Yogi Dave and you know buy a, buy me a coffee get you in and then a raffle can win you some shit um, and whatever raffle is ongoing at this moment in time um, is on the side um, yeah so that's it um, as always also if you want me to paint some models for you or you want me to build some put some terrain together for you um, my email address is davidgmu at yahoo.co.uk because I keep, keep the Yogi Dave side of it and my side of it like the commission side of it completely separate so I can complete, keep, completely keep the revenue streams separate um, yeah there are slots open so yeah Um next week Paul Cook from Pandemonium Miniatures will be on the podcast um, hope, I had a really good conversation with him and I hope you guys enjoy that one too um, so I will be back then today so I'm going to say good day, happy hobby